it's time to let sharks off the hook. Sharks are amazing creatures, and they have been since before there were dinosaurs. They come in all shapes and sizes, from the gentle whale shark to the teeny tiny dwarven lantern shark. They're phenomenal, and they also have a mostly unearned bad reputation. Look, I get it. Sharks are scary. They're predators. They live in the water. We can't even see them until they're really close, and occasionally they mistake us for something else, like a tasty seal. But trust me, sharks have got way more to be scared of about us than we do about them. Sharks are really important parts of a balanced ecosystem. Let's take seagrass beds, for example. Without sharks, the foragers of these seagrass beds would eat up all the seagrass, which would be great for exactly one generation of foragers. After that, you'd be in some serious trouble. So the predators help keep everything in balance, but they've been in danger for quite some time. Out of all the species of sharks and rays assessed by the International Union of Nature, about half of them are on the near-threatened level of extinction or worse. And every year, 100 million sharks are caught by fisheries. Fortunately, we have a lot of conservation efforts across multiple platforms. On the political side, the United Nations has passed resolutions to regulate shark trade, which is an enormous step. They've also put into protection several species of sharks, and there are now shark sanctuaries around the world. Meanwhile, shark biologists have taken to social media platforms like Facebook and Twitter to communicate directly to us which is fantastic. We get the benefit of their knowledge, their enthusiasm, and their love of these animals to help encourage our own curiosity. If that's not enough, sharks themselves have joined Twitter. Yeah. Sharks like Catherine, who was captured and tagged and released off the coast of Cape Cod, and Mary Lee, who cruises up and down the East Coast tweeting about things like fast food, the swimming kind, have joined the Twitterati. And you can use an app called Osearch. It's a nonprofit shark tracking app, and it keeps track of multiple sharks wherever they go. All the sharks that have been tagged are there available for you to look at at any given time, so you can watch their migration throughout the year. A shark might start its journey off the coast of New England and end in the Bahamas. That's a shark that knows how to vacation. The real purpose of Osearch is to give people another tool to connect with these sharks in a way that doesn't encourage fear. It encourages wonder to see the journey of one shark as it moves throughout the Atlantic or the Pacific. Searching out food is phenomenal and exciting. But if this isn't enough for you, you can always get more hands-on with shark conservation. A lot of organizations allow the general public to join on shark tagging expeditions. They're mostly geared towards school kids, but there's some that allow people who graduated some time ago to join along. And it's really exciting. You could actually take part in shark conservation, letting scientists learn more about these creatures and protecting them for the future. Now, personally, I've never been on one of these trips yet. But I know a guy, and when he has an opening on his next trip, I want to go along. But I want to hear what you guys think. What is the next step in shark conservation? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks to Toyota for sponsoring our show. If you enjoyed this episode, hit the like button, join the Forward Thinking Think Tank by subscribing to our channel, and then swim on over here for some other awesome videos.